know, it's interesting. Whenever people in comedy talk about what inspired them in the early days, it's always Johnny Carson. I mean, there's just this, this sort of love and nostalgia for that. And, yeah. You know, and you were part of, you know, the talk show era, also in one of its sort of golden years, both in terms of, you know, the experiments and how it evolved, but also scandals and fights and you know, all these juicy scandals? things. Scandals? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jay Leno stuff <laughs> coming coming back around. Um, so, and now it seems like talk shows are kind of on the wane. Do you feel like, does it make you sad that it's sort of not what this thing you you sort of idolized in the beginning? It, it's it's a very challenging time for, for talk shows, without a doubt. And, and, and it's largely, I think, due to the technology that exists. Um, you know, at, at, at their core, though I've dedicated my professional life to them, the truth is talk shows are by design meant to be filler. You know, they're, it's meant to be, here's your giant prime time schedule, here's all your stuff, and at the end of the day, we're going to have this little thing that doesn't cost much money with a funny guy or gal doing stuff. That's what it's kind of meant to be. That's what Johnny Carson was. That's what Dave is. Um, now the problem, among many problems, is well, there's some general problems to all of television and some specific to talk shows. In general, of course, all the obvious, there's now five million channels, so the pie is you know, cut smaller and smaller. What's particularly difficult for talk shows is that the, the thing that's eating on in, into them, there, there's been a few things along the way. The, the, the first kind of big you know, shot to talk shows was syndicated programming. When you started to have sitcoms Friends, Frasier, Raymond, Seinfeld, all of these funny shows on at 11 or 11.30 at night, you now had actual comedy competition. That was the first kind of blow to talk shows. Mm -hmm. There was other funny things at 11 o'clock that you could watch besides a talk show. Now the biggest thing that's affecting them is the DVR. Because now people are programming their own prime time. You know, it's very typical that somebody will watch four hours of prime time. If they're going to watch TV from 7 to eight to midnight, that 11 to 12 does not have to be a talk show anymore. It can, you know, we're now competing with CSI. Mm -hmm. It's hard to compete with CSI. You know what I mean? It's, it's, these shows by nature are not, they don't have storylines. They're just supposed to be what they are. What, I'm, what we're very lucky in is that we have a brand. You know, Dave is a brand. I, it would be very hard to be starting off now. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, there's tremendous talent out there right now. You know, Ferguson's amazing, Fallon's amazing, Jimmy Kimmel's amazing, Conan's amazing. Th these guys are, uh, Stewart and Colbert, of course. Like they're, they're, they there's named everyone but Leno, just for the record. Jay also has a show. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. Jay's watching this. I know Jay. He'll find this. Um, no, I, I, you know, I, I like Jay. He's just fine. Um, but uh, <laughs> I think everyone else you've made fun of, you've said, I love that person. <laughs> he said, I like Jay. He's just Jay fine. Jay is a person. No. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's very hard, I think. I, I don't know that anyone going forward will ever have the mantle that Dave and Johnny had. It's just the nature of it. I, I can feel it all. And it's not even about their, their talent. I mean, yes, I think, of course, I'm biased. Um, you know, my kids' college educations are paid for by the man. But, you know, Dave, I think, is a kind of a, a once-in-a-lifetime talent. I think Johnny is as well. But additionally, there is this enormous, you know, Johnny Carson's show used to get a 50 share, meaning, and sometimes more, sometimes a 60 or 65 share, meaning 65% of the televisions that were tuned on were watching that guy. Mm -hmm. I can already feel the difference. When we moved to CBS, uh, when we would do stuff on the show, the next day, I'd be on the street. People would come up to me and, and talk to me about it. You know, it's, it's, it happens still, but it's much, much harder. Like, we need Joaquin Phoenix to go nuts on the show. For, <laughs> you know what I mean? We need John McCain to come on or Obama. Like, occasionally it'll happen, but it's... It's a difficult landscape for talk shows. Having said that, I don't think they'll ever go away because they're extremely efficient programming. They're relatively cheap. Well, they're for promotion what vehicles. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't want it to go away. Well, that's, that's true, too. I mean, and, and that's another thing that's, that's tough about it because there's all of these avenues. It used to be with Johnny Carson, like the only time you were ever going to get to see Jane Fonda mm -hmm. would be on the Johnny Carson show. Now, 
you know, you get to see, you know, every celebrity, not only on every show, but you get to see them walking from their, uh, the restaurant to their car on uh, TMZ. Right. That's a show. Let's watch celebrities go from the restaurant <laughs> to their car <laughs> and then have a guy drink a soda in the newsroom to talk about that. <laughs> And that guy has more money than all of us put together. Um, if I take myself out of that equation, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I just, I just love this persona that I'm some rich guy. But um, it's Cause yes, most, it's, yeah, because you have a hockey rink. <laughs> like, let's not act like this isn't true. It's a discount hockey rink. And you have like a house next to Regis in the Hamptons. That that hurts my value. <laughs> I once, ran in, I once ran into Regis, this is no joke, in this little supermarket in Banksville, <laughs> right by my house. And uh, I've come to know Regis, and I love him, and he's tremendous. And I run into him, and you don't expect to see him in the supermarket, but there he is. And what's amazing about Regis is when he's not on TV, he's still 100% Regis. <laughs> like a complete Regis. He starts going, Joy's making me buy cat food. Like that, I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, why? Why do you have to be Regis? And, 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 and I'm not kidding. And, and the, the cat food was stacked in such a way that he couldn't grab it. And he starts doing the whole thing about, like, why do they stack it like this? What? And it's like, Regis, it's just me and you in Bensville. Just save this for Monday. But I love the guy.